Hello and happy Wednesday. I'll, um, oh, there we go. Okay, now I'm starting to see people jump on. I try not to start talking until I see at least a few people hop on. So hello and welcome to my Stampin' Peace studio. For those of you who are new to me, I am Mary Nabe, and I'm coming live from Columbus, Ohio on Wednesday evening, April 26th. Can you believe Mon Monday is a new month? Monday is May already. I, I don't even know what happened to this last month. Um, but uh, things are quite busy here. Um, just preparing samples for new classes and new Facebook Lives as our new catalog launches on Tuesday, May 2nd. Um, and in addition to that, I am hosting my daughter's baby shower here on Sunday um, for lunch. It's going to be a great time, but I'm using my studio to host that. If you ever need to clean out your craft space or your basement, you host a party, let me tell you. So I'm cleaning and purging and giving away some um, craft supplies and um, also decorating for the baby shower. So it's a, a busy week, but an exciting week with so much happening in Stampin' Up! as we get excited about a brand new catalog going live on Tuesday. Um, and then of course with this baby shower I'm hosting. And for those of you that don't know, um, I'm gonna be a first time grandma. So I'm super excited. Baby Schmidt is due um, July 8th and uh, John and Andrea are having a little girl. So very, very excited. Quick reminder that my In Color Club registration is still open through Sunday the 30th, April 30th. Um, so if you want to participate in that, please go to stampinpeace.com and um, there is a blog post about my In Color Club, all the information, what's included, pricing, etc. And there is a link to register for that right there. Um, yeah, and I guess that's it for the news. I'm looking forward to um, sharing lots of fun things with you next week. Please do mark your calendar for Tuesday, May 2nd, not just because it's the launch of our new annual catalog, but also I'll be doing a new catalog walkthrough where I take you through the pages of this wonderful catalog and point out some of my favorite products and tools and maybe some um, point out some things that you might not have noticed or overlooked as you've been um, going through your catalogs. If you do not have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to be your demonstrator and earn your business. Just go to stampinpeace.com, click contact me, and you can fill out the form to request a complimentary catalog. Um, I've already sent out my shipment of catalogs and I'm hearing from customers that they have been receiving them um, end of last week and um, into this week and I'm hearing nothing but great reviews and I'm sure people are ma making out their wish list. Um, and I'm just going to say too, if you find that with this new catalog launch, your wish list is growing, it's rather long please consider purchasing the starter kit and joining my Mary Stampers team. That's Mary, M-E-R-R-Y, sort of a play on my name. Um, because with that starter kit, you can get $125 of product of your choice and you'll pay just $99 and it all ships to you free. So it's really a great deal. It's the very best deal that we have um, and you can think of it as your own um, custom bundle, okay? So if you have questions about that, I do have information at stampinpeace.com or feel free to contact me and I'm happy to um, discuss that opportunity to purchase a starter kit. Uh, you can just join for the discount. You don't have to do classes or anything if you don't want to, but 
if you do, I'm here to support you with that as well. But I always like to offer the starter kit to everyone because it really is the best deal. It's where you get the most value for your money, okay? All right, it's time to make some cards. So I'm going to flip my camera around now, and while I do that, please invite others to join us this evening. After all, crafting is always more fun with more people, right? All right, this week's um, featured product is, once again, beautiful balloons. If you missed Monday's Facebook Live, that will be going up on my blog very soon, but you can still review the video from Monday right here on Facebook at Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe. We did a version of the um, stack and shuffle technique using the wonderful designer series paper that's part of this um, product suite. In addition to that fabulous, bright and beautiful paper, I'll be using a little bit of that, but I'll also be introducing you to this specialty paper, and it's called Gold Celebrations. It's got the pretty random polka dots. It's got some confetti and what do I want to call those swirly things? And then this one, I love this one with the stars and it's a top and bottom um, feature. And they're all 12 by 12, but look at this. Here's the surprise because it's called Gold Celebrations. It's really hard to show this um, because of the glare. So I do understand that. So bear with me because it's the best I can do to show you this. Um, but look how awesome it is. And it's kind of a teaser because the name of this specialty paper is called Gold Celebrations. But you actually get your choice of using gold and silver. So we're going to make two cards today. And one will feature um, the gold specialty paper that's basically a window sheet with the patterns and colors on it. And then we'll make another card that will feature um, a pattern with the silver. And I'm mainly using die cuts from the bundle today. So I'm going to start with this piece of blueberry bushel. How many of you were thrilled that blueberry bushel was brought back into our product line? It's such a fun, fun blue. Bright, cheerful, kind of festive looking. But I've made my card base four and a quarter by 11 inches, and then I scored it in half at five and a half. So four and a quarter by 11 inches, scored in the middle at five and a half. So from the same sheet of designer series paper, I can get two card bases. Okay, just um, the opposite of going the other direction, right? Five and a half by eight and a half, and you score at four and a quarter. But each way um, allows you to make two card bases from one piece of eight and a half by 11 inch cardstock. So I've chosen this festive DSP to put on my card front. And then I'm going to set this aside for now, but I'm going to die cut some balloons. I've got three colors of cardstock here, and I chose these because they coordinate with the 
designer series paper in this suite. So I've got blueberry bushel, lemon lime twist, and berry burst. And don't they look great together? So now I'm going to use these three balloon dies. I'm going to cut the largest one. Let me do it this way so I can get more on a platform. I'm going to cut the largest balloon from the berry burst, the medium balloon from lemon lime twist, and then the smallest balloon from blueberry bushel. And all three of these dies actually also match up with the three balloon stamps that you will find in the stamp set. So that's nice to have the option of stamping and die cutting or simply die cutting in cardstock or even designer series paper. This would be pretty as a balloon itself, wouldn't it? So consider that with your die cutting. You don't always have to stamp and then die cut. You can simply die cut cardstock or DSP. Now I'm going to cut some more balloons, but this time I'm going to cut this specialty paper, the Gold Celebration specialty paper. And again, it's just a window sheet that's printed on the front and back, gold on one side, silver on the other. And I've cut this piece so that I can die cut all three of these balloons at the same time. Now notice the noise when you're cutting the, uh, just like window sheets, right? It makes that crazy loud noise. It almost sounds like plastic breaking or glass breaking or glass cracking, but it's all okay. You're not hurting your machines. You're not hurting anything. It's just the noise that is made when you're using that type of, oh shoot, it moved on me. I ran it through twice and I didn't check. So let me quick grab another piece. We can't use those for heaven's sakes. I should have just ran it back through instead of pulling it out to the front, but that's okay. So let's try that again, okay? I have to say I've been very, very, very efficient with my time today and have been extremely productive but it was probably about, oh, I don't know, 5, 5.15 here. And I was making a card. Actually, I'm making thank you notes for um, Andrea and John um, for the baby shower as a gift. And I cut the same piece wrong, I think, three times in a row. And that's when I said, you know what? <laughs> If I can't get it cut to the right dimension three times, it's time for a break. Went upstairs, had a glass of water, listened to a little bit of news, and then came back down, cut my cardstock, all was good. So take that tip from me. If you are in a position of, um, you've made a couple of mistakes in a row, I think that's a sign that you need to take a break and come back to it. But maybe that never happens to you. I don't know. Okay, now I want to adhere these to my cardstock balloons. So it just kind of um, adds a little something more special to a plain balloon. And to adhere these, and I noticed if you get... Um, 
just like when you're working with regular um, window sheets, you're going to get your fingerprints on there. And I try to wipe them off as best I can. But to adhere these, I want to hide my adhesive. So I'm using mini glue dots. And what I'm going to do for each of these balloons with the gold dots is I'm just going to pick two of the gold dots that are kind of opposite each other or in different areas. And I put that glue dot right on the back of the gold metallic dot or cover up the silver side of that dot. Because now I've got it layered, it looks super pretty, but you're not seeing any adhesive through that window sheet. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm gonna just wipe the back of these. It's typically more on the top side that you're gonna get the um, fingerprints, but I always like to go over, oh, this is a little tricky here. I like to go over the back side also. And I do my best not to put any more on there, but chances are most people won't even notice if you have a smudge or a fingerprint on there, but it'll make you feel better if you go ahead and wipe off the fingerprints, especially on the front side. Those are the ones that are going to show. Now here's a little tricky because I don't have that much space be behind the dots. So on this one, this little partial dot, I may have to even just fold that mini glue dot over a little bit or roll it. Either way will work. Oh, Holly, I'm so glad you got your pre-order today. And now you can just have fun creating the rest of the week, right? Now, before I adhere these pretty balloons to my card front, I'm going to add some balloon strings. And for that, I'm using the Simply Elegant Trim. You get one bolt of gold and one bolt of silver. So it's a perfect add-on for this Celebrations DSP, Specialty DSP. And once again, I'm grabbing my glue dots. I'm going to put a single glue dot on the back of the bottom of the balloon. I'm going to do that for each one. And one really is enough. Then I'm going to take this gold trim adhere it to the glue dot and give myself enough length and cut it off. And I'm just kind of guesstimating, just looking. I'm not cutting a particular length. I'm just kind of winging it. Then I'm going to use some dimensionals. The first dimensionals I add are going to go right over the end of that trim behind the balloon. And then for these larger balloons, I'll add some extra dimensionals to hold the balloon in place. I, you know what, I'm gonna put an extra on that little one just in case. Then before I remove the backings, I'm just going to kind of lay these out, you know, see what I want here. You know, do I want something like that? Do I want it this way? 
or do I want something, oops, something more like this? And I think this is kind of grabbing my attention. So that's what I'm going to do. And I like to start with the biggest balloon first and get that placed where I want it. And I'm going fairly close to the top edge of the DSP. And then I'm going to place the medium size one. And I'm going to tuck this under the large balloon a little bit. And then the last one, I'm going to place even lower. But you just, you make your balloons and you play around with them a little bit and decide how you want to place them. There's no right or wrong answer. It's completely your preference, your style, whatever you want it to be. It could be balloons of all the same color even. Um, so you do your thing. Now, I want to kind of, instead of just having those balloon strands or strings just kind of there, I want to do something with them. So I'm going to kind of gather them and put a glue dot behind where they're all gathered. So I kind of look probably about here would be good, I think. And so I just kind of estimate based on how I was gathering those strings. And I'm just going to pull each string to that glue dot. I have found that one glue dot is enough, but if you think it's not and you want to give yourself some added security and put a new a second glue dot there, by all means do. You can put them right next to each other. Actually, I'm thinking I might turn this balloon just a bit like that. And then I'm going to go over the top of the three strands with another glue dot directly over the top of those three strands already being held in place by the glue dot underneath. Then I'm going to make a little bow. If you don't want to put a bow there, you don't have to. You can leave it as is. You can um, do just a simple knot. But I thought the bow looked kind of fun. And I just want a real little one. Remember when you're tying bows, make sure you give yourself enough length to work with that you can move the um, loops and tails until you get the bow to the size you wanted. You can see this bow is smaller than when I first pulled it through to make the bow. But I just may always make sure I give myself enough length when I start out. You can also see I typically, if I'm just doing one, I typically don't cut um, the length of ribbon then make the bow. I just start from the end and I leave it on the bolt or the roll, okay? Julie, it is pretty thin. It is pretty thin. We've had some um, gold tr and silver trim in the past that were much thicker and much stiffer. I want to say it was several years ago with, I don't know, probably four or five years ago. Um, and it came out in the holiday catalog. But this is thinner than that, okay? Um, and I love that it comes as a combo pack of both gold and silver because I know some people are all about um, team silver and some are team gold. Do you have a preference? Are you one or the other, team gold, team silver? So I'm going to stamp this message on the inside. I think it's time for a celebration. And of course, this sentiment is fun, but it's kind of generic. So we can use it for several 
different occasions, right? It could be a birthday party. It could be a graduation. Um, it could be a team party. It could be a promotion. I can think of using this sentiment and this card for people of all different ages and all different occasions, correct? Thanks to all of you who have shared this video. I appreciate it so, so much. It's always more fun to um, when we can welcome others to our stamping and crafting sessions. So this is one card that I will, oh, I wanted to do one more thing, one more thing. I'm going to add a little confetti here. Let's see, how do I want to go? So I stamp the sentiment with that blueberry bushel, and I'm stamping the confetti and streamers with berry burst. So that is one card I'm giving away tonight, right? I'm looking at your message, Julie. I like that you put the blue ink banner on the inside of, oh, on the side of the ink pad. Yes, this is something new I just started doing. Um, you know, we get these stickers underneath and there are different, um, there's one label in English and then one of them is plain and then the others are languages for other markets that we service. But I used to put my blank label on the inside here and I decided this time I'm going to put it right here on the edge and I love it so much better. I love it so much better. So um, yeah, that's what those labels are for on the back and they're very, very helpful. All right, let's make a second card. Now this one's going to be more tone on tone. Um, again, I'm pulling the Berry Burst from the Designer Series Paper Pack, Bright and I think it's called Bright and Beautiful. Again, my card base is four and a quarter by 11 inches and scored down the center at five and a half. I've got white for the inside, five and a quarter by four inches as usual. And then I've got this piece of cardstock, the um, bright and beautiful cardstock. I wanna make sure that's the correct name. It is, bright and beautiful cardstock is a six by six pack. So I cut it at four inches. So this piece measures four by six, but I don't need it to be four inch, uh, four by six for my card front. I need it to be four by five and a quarter. So I'm just going to cut off a little bit here, cutting off three quarters of an inch. So I'll use this on the front of my card and then that three quarter inch strip I can use to decorate the inside of the card. Now, oftentimes when I add a little strip of DSP to the inside, oh, I guess I didn't need that much adhesive, did I? Um, I just add the adhesive, but I'm going to do something a little bit different to this piece. I'm going to take that stamp with the confetti and streamers and I'm going to stamp, stamp it across that piece of DSP. And you can randomly turn it whichever way you like. Go up there. Like I want a little bit more over here. And maybe a little more, more over here. You know, let's make it a real party, right? Just adds a little element of fun on the inside of the card. 
So for this card, I'm using the, again, that tricky name, Gold Celebrations. Why did they come up with that name? I guess maybe they wanted to surprise us because it has the silver on the back. But it, I feel funny saying Gold Celebration Specialty DSB because you're looking at silver. Okay, so I want this to color, basically cover my entire card front, cover that piece of DSP I put on there. However, I don't want to stick it on now because I don't want my adhesive showing, right? So I'm going to set this aside. And I already pre-cut these balloons and these pieces of that specialty DSP with the silver dots. And I want to show you, I used this, this die. So let's take a look at the die set. The three dies we used first um, are actually, what do I want to say? They're not solid. They have a middle, they're open, right? That is because they match up to these stamp images. So this way, if we stamp, then we can see exactly what um, we're going to be die cutting. And we'll be able to um, center those stamped images within the dies. Now, in the die set, there are a few. Um, there's two balloons, this large one, the small one. And then there's the... Uh, stars as well and they're solid and those are just intended um, as kind of like accent dies so that you can die cut number one we get two more sizes of the balloons which is cool so now we have five sizes um, but then this is what you would use if you're just cutting cardstock you can certainly do it with the others but it's just an extra enhancement to the die set so just like I added the gold dot specialty papers to the other balloons with mini glue dots, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just putting the mini glue dots behind two of the silver dots or covering up two of the gold dots. I also made one distinction from the first card is I also made each of these balloons the same size and the same color. It looks like maybe I scratched that dot there. Not sure how I did that. But that's okay. When we put the whole card together, it'll hardly be noticeable. Nothing to fret over. No stress in stamping, right? Keep it simple. Have fun. So now, again, I'm thinking about my whole card, how it's going to come together. But again, I'm not ready to adhere this window sheet, this large um, window sheet with the silver streamers to the card yet because I want to make sure that when I'm ready to do that the adhesive I'm using is being hidden by the balloons I'm using on top. So before I add my balloons I want to add some silver strings. And as you can see on this card, I'm using two of the silver patterns, the dots and the confetti and streamers. With this, I'm going to do the very same thing that I did before. I'm just going to attach one end of the silver trim to that glue dot and cut off the length. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the other two balloons.
I'm wondering if I missed a... Oh, I did miss a glue dot there. That's why that's sliding around. But what is going on? There we go. That's why you want two glue dots back there instead of one, because you don't want it sliding around. I'm going to put two dimensionals on each balloon. One of them I definitely want to cover up the end of that trim. Just another way to um, secure that in place to make sure it holds. Then I'm going to arrange these, kind of take a look, how do I want these? Do I want them all together up close like that, close together? Do I want them spread out? Do I want them kind of spaced similar to the first card? Makes no difference, right? You just move them around, play with them, and then when you feel you have a layout that is appealing to you, you go with it. And I'm sure it's going to be fabulous, and everybody will love it. And go fairly near to the top. And, you know, maybe this way. I'm kind of going to angle the second and the third balloon. Because that's what they would naturally do if you had um, somebody was holding those strings and had them gathered like that. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different to hold these. I have to go the other direction. Um, to hold these balloon strings together. If you need to maybe take a piece of scotch tape or something, or, oh, even a, um, I've got some right here, a post-it note to kind of help hold those in place while you're tying that other piece around, go ahead and do that. So this is, this is what I mean. I'm pulling those together and I'm just using that post-it note to hold those three strands in place. And then I'm going to tie them all together with this additional piece, which I cut a little long, but I guess that's all right. Better a little too long than too short, right? That's my motto and my piece of advice to everyone when you're working with ribbons and trim. Better a little too long than too short. Okay, so this is what we have. I'm gonna trim these down. And then I wanna show you something about this trim. You can I'm going to put a glue down behind that knot, but I want to do this first. You can just run these strands between your thumb and the blade of your paper snips, and it kind of separates all of the strands. Just giving it a different look, kind of a fun, festive look, in my opinion, kind of fringy like. But if you can, can you see that? How it separates the silver strands from the white or the nearly clear threads inside. So you're just separating out the fibers. If that's not your style, you don't want to fan out those fibers, just trim the ends and leave them be. But I wanted to show you that alternate way of trimming those. 
Now I'm ready to adhere this to my card front. Why? Because now I know exactly where I'm going to put my adhesive on this um, specialty DSP, this specialty window sheet. And you do want to use a strong adhesive when you're adhering um, a material like this. So glue dots are fabulous. I like the Stamp and Seal Plus for this. Um, a tiny bit of tear and tape, something like that. For this material, I do not recommend um, the multi-purpose glue. It just moves around too much and it doesn't dry well with this material, okay? And let me take my paper towel in there and just go over my balloons a little bit, removing any of the um, fingerprints I might have had on there. So really, it's a very simple card, isn't it? Very simple card. Um, could be great for birthdays. What else? What about the end of the school year? Or even a teacher gift, right? Celebrating the end of the year and a wonderful teacher. Um, and maybe somebody's finishing up their high school career and graduating. Retirement. Yes, Tony. Awesome. Uh, promotions. Any kind of celebration, big or small. This card I think would be enjoyed by just about everybody. So here are the two cards. Again, the featured products this week were the beautiful balloons bundle, has the stamp set and all the dies, and the bright and beautiful DSP, and then the Gold Celebrations 12 by 12 Specialty DSP, which is this um, window sheet-like material with the gold on one side and silver on the opposite. All right, who would love to get one of these cards? And you know, I'm curious, when people win cards, um, do you send it out, pay it forward? Do you keep it and use it for inspiration? Or if you're a demonstrator, do you put it on display to show show, you know, just another sample. I'm just curious what people do with theirs. All right, I can see lots of people would love to um, have their name chosen to receive one of these cards. Oh, let's see. Okay, Shanda is on my team. She says she uses it as inspiration. Um, Cindy says she copies it and then sends it out for someone else to enjoy. I love that, paying it forward. Julie, you hoard them for inspiration. And you know what? That is okay to keep them for inspiration. You can go back to this time and time again using the same layout, um, maybe even changing up the balloons for something else. Maybe use stars. Um, it could be anything. So that is awesome. Um more than I pay it forward and donate a bunch of cards. Oh, I love that too. Who said that about donating the cards? Tony, awesome. Jan uses hers for reference, wonderful. Um, and that's what I love to hear, that you're just using them, whether it be for inspiration and reference, um, maybe color combinations or card layouts, card sketches or that you want to use them and pay them forward and make somebody else's day. Either way, it's great. I'm happy to know that you're using them. All right, if you would like to receive one of these, you know what, we already did beautiful balloons, I think. We did that the other night, didn't we? So let's do gold celebrations. Gold celebrations, this is the specialty DSP, it's like window sheets with the three patterns, the stars, the um, the dots, and the streamers and confetti. So gold celebrations. If you would like to uh, have your name put in the drawing to receive one of these cards, please type in the comments now, gold celebrations. 
While you're doing that, I'm going to quickly go back through and see if I missed any questions. I do try to glance up at the comments as I'm doing the demonstration, but sometimes it can I can miss a question. I don't think I think we're all good. I think we're all good. Okay. Um, because I'm prepping and getting my house ready and thinking about food for the baby shower, I will not be having a Facebook Live this Friday. I will not be having a Facebook Live this Friday. Um, and did I tell you I'm also running a quarter marathon? Not running, walking, jogging. <laughs> Maybe more walking, but I'm doing a quarter marathon with my son-in-law and his um, sister on Saturday. So I'm, I might be real sore on Sunday for the bridal shower or baby shower. But anyways, my sister's coming over on Friday afternoon and we're going to start prepping the food and I'm so grateful for her help. Um, she's also doing some centerpieces for the six tables down here. So I'm excited. Lori, thank you. Thank you so much. And you know what it's like getting excited about being a grandma because you're a new grandma and the picture you sent was just precious. All right, everybody, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Thank you for spending part of your day with me. If you like what you saw here today and you have not checked out my blog or subscribed to it, I hope that you will check it out. It's stampinpeace.com. Um, and it's just full of creative inspiration. All right, everybody. Good night. Oh, Cindy, you have five granddaughters. That's awesome. I'm two daughters and one granddaughter on the way. So lots of fun. Take care, everybody. Um, have a good night.